Fellow Nigerians, I beg, make we not share this video. Go where Igbo people did because <laughs> some Igbo people no go like to listen to this particular video you guys are about to watch. Make we not just say waiting. This Nigerian man, they tell the Igbos. They just ask him one particular question. <laughs> For one interview, say make you come react to the question. They could not just hear in your reaction. Because eh, since when they bought me up to this age, when I did, I never hear something like this for my life. Make could not share the video, make other Nigerians still hear with Mr. Abumachi, let us get a view because you have been saying it that Igbos have sacrificed so much for this country. What are those areas of sacrifice? What, are, what, what, what is it that is so new to Nigerians where Igbo has made most of their sacrifice in this country? It's no news that Igbo has contributed a lot 90 percent in sports in nigeria when we talk about the first nigerian gold medalist olympic gold medalist every hands should be pointing at shoma Jungwa. when you talk about the first olympic medalist in nigeria in 1960s abi 50s you talk about colonel emmanuel ifaju it's from our nature shoma Juma is from imo state Choma Juma, uh, Ajumwa. When you talk about other people like Samuel Okwaraji that sacrificed much his blood and life for sports in Nigeria. You are talking about Tibo man. Samuel Okwaraji is from Imo State. Boundary of Imo and Anambra State. When you talk about Christian Chuku, the olden days chairman Chuku, is an Igbo man. When you talk about Dean of Defense, as Anes Okonko gave him when he was alive. Anes, my uncle. You are talking about Ibo man, Stephen Kech, Stephen Okechuku, Sunday only said that he denied his Ibo ancestry. I think he's suffering it now. Oga, how can you tell me that Jeju Okocha is not an Ibo man? Jeju Okocha is an Ibo man from Ogbachuku. Sports. Oga, what are you talking about, Emmanuel Okocha? What are you talking about, Emmanuel Okala? Oga, we dominated the sports. You talk about Kanu Wanko. The first, what do they call that goal that is scored? Is it golden goal? Golden goal. Scorer in the world is an Igbo man. Oga, the one Billy that signed in the past African Cup of Nations in Cote d'Ivoire is an Igbo boy. Igbo for Tarkot. Oga, we dominated the sports. Before I come to entertainment, I would like to tell you that the first person to lift Olympic Coca-Cola World Cup. JVC, even in 1985, was Nuko Bade. is from Delta Igbo. Oga, we dominated. Without Igbo, there's no Nigeria. Then let me enter entertainment. Who is it that is dominating Nigerian musical atmosphere? The solo industry in Africa is controlled by Igbo man. Oga, the Kora Award given to his square is equal to none. I think that could be 2013. Mm -hmm. Is it 2013? Then we have Chidema. Chidema won it in 20, either 15 or 14. Chidema Kora Award. KDK. Are you listening to me? Then you talk about the, all of them. I don't want to name them, but before calling all this new generation music, musicians, I would like to tell you about Onye Kongwenu. Oster Steven Osadebe. Oga, we are not playing to exonerate only Bolan. We are playing it to do what? To cap Nigerian musical entertainment with gold. Oga, we are not talking about commerce and industry. You know, Igbo has been doing well in commerce and industry since 1950s. I would like to tell you that the only billionaire an Africa has pro produced in the 1930s, 40s is Ojuku's father. And he has never soiled his hands on the management of public fund in any African nation. He worked his sweat out of it. Out of his sweat, he made billions. He virtually bought the whole of Papa. Nigeria stole it from Ojuku's father today. The whole Lake Axis, the whole Tinkan Island, the whole, uh, uh, what do you call it, Oyimbo. You know, Park, Ojuku's father has it. He was a billionaire during his time that has never managed Nigerian coal corporation or Nigerian railway station, uh, railway. I know you talk about listen and listen good. I'm coming. Wait for me, I they come. We have sacrificed lots and lots. We are not sleepy type. We are not sleeping. We, Igbo man is not sleeping. Igbo man is hardworking, working, 
doing the man job, dredging gutter. Ibo man is built into brick layer. Everything suffering. Every day sleepless night to make money. And after making money, one day T idiot will be casting Ibo, saying that Ibo will not rule Nigeria. Ibo is not qualified. Who tell you? Everybody, any politician in Nigeria that said Ibo is not fit to rule Nigeria, should talk up his dirty mouth. Well, I wanted to ask you the Ibo sacrifice. Does it extend to what uh, Azik did? I mean, uh, Azik of Africa. Azik of Africa sacrificed a lot to, 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 to Nigeria. He gave Nigeria the independence. Okay, when you talk about uh, West African pilots editor, is not a name that is Couple with uh, Antonio Nahoro. And if you trace Antonio Nahoro ancestry, Antonio Nahoro ancestry, you will find out that he's part of us in the southeastern Nigeria. Because his, his state, Delta, is lying along the coastal line of Biafra. Are you listening to me? So when you talk about West African pilot that did well during the era of independence in West Africa, you will count Zeke, number one. I will have fought, too. These are educated Igbos that went to Harvard universities. And the other university went in 1930. I've forgotten the name. In the USA. These are very, very educated people. In On the field of education, Igbo man has sacrificed a lot for Nigeria. Igbo man has celebrated Nigeria, brought Nigeria to the limelight. Igbo man is a light in Nigeria, and we are shining well. Am I going to... Just talk about education. Do you know that Chimamanda, the author of Half Yellow of a Son? Are you listening to me? It's Chimamanda Adichie, the first West African professor of mathematics. It's Chikobi, Professor Chikobi. It's from Onitsha. The best computer we are using today that is faster than Bill Gates' computer is Philip Megbalo. He's an Igbo man. Are you listening to me? When you talk about the first VC of university in Nigeria, the first university in Nigeria is UI, Ibadan. The first VC is Kenneth Wamukadike, professor. He's from Iboma, he's an Iboma. Okay, what is it anybody can tell me that Louis Simbanefo has never presided over World Court judge in Hague? Louis Simbanefo is from Umuahia. What are you telling me? Okay? The best Oxford graduate we have in the 1950s. Yeah. Is Chukwemeko Dumego Juku. He graduated as a black man in Oxford University. And you know how the British held him at the high esteem during his study era, sorry, in England, when he was in Oxford University. So, what is anybody talking about Igbo? Igbo is overqualified to do everything. Igbo is the sixth richest tribe in the world. Oga, I repeat, Igbo is the sixth richest tribe in the world. Are you listening to me? Sixth richest tribe in the world. Oga, and when you talk about tribe of Israel, the Jews, you are giving them number one. Because if Jews could come in, although I know they are, it means that Igbo are the richest in the world because of their what ancestry connection with the jews with israel because all i know is that wherever you go in the world the richest people the richest community are the jews the jews rule the world and they both have stronger connection than any other tribe in africa to the jews we are the hebrews hebrews i don't know what understand what i'm saying okay we have sacrificed a lot in the military the first military head of state in Nigeria is Agui Rosi. It's from Omoahia. Johnson Omoanakwe. Thomas. He was killed for nothing. Out of jealousness and envy. And the mere empty accusation that the coup of 1960s was all Igbo coup. Ogada coup was to make Awolowo Nigerian president because the whole military, or young military officers, believed that Awolowo was the most qualified person to rule Nigeria in 1966. When it mattered most, Namdi Aziko was playing politics, uh, Tafawa Belawa was playing politics, Akintola and Awolo were fighting stu themselves to, uh, stu to stupidity in the Southwest. Egbokoya boy, bo boys, uh, 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 this using, you know, all manner of weapons to injure themselves in the Southwest. And that was how the coup came to be. And after the coup now, they said Igbo did not die. They disallowed Yoruba. They disallowed our son. 
They disallowed this. They did. Adego Yaga was among the coup plotters. Go and read why we struck. After reading why we struck, you find out that the author, a Yoruba man, was crediting the Igbos, saying this coup wasn't because of Igbo man. He said the coup succeeded. It does not mean say they didn't kill Igbos. He said those are my and all of them traveled abroad. That's why they killed all the politicians that were around in Nigeria. That it wasn't an Igbo coup. Adegbo Yaga, the author of Why We Struck, is not a film Bechi that wrote the book. I'm not the author of the book, Why We Struck. And again, go and read Chukwa Meka, my friend, written by Freddie Forsyth. It will tell you all about Nigerian civil war. It is not all about coup. It was oil war. They found out that there's much, much oil along the states of the Biafran coastal line. That's why they intensified effort to make sure that they brought Igbo man down. By killing over 30,000 people in 1966. Operation Ochefu was going on in the north, Abiokuta, everywhere, southwest, north, 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 killing Igbo officers, only Igbo officers, officers from Igbo extraction. Then it's extended to the Igbos who are doing their business on the street of Kanu. They start killing the Igbos, burning their chop on the street. Killings and the burning evil chops they did not start today. It started 58 years ago. Okay, Ibo has gone a long, a long way to sacrifice blood, sacrifice money. After the war, Awolo we confiscated all our money in the banks, in various banks across Nigeria. We were given only 20 naira. And today, I can tell you that... 20 pounds. 20 pounds, thank you. Today I can tell you that the Igbos are doing well. Irrespective of the fact that they lost all they had in the bank during the war and after the war, they still from nowhere woke up, resurrected again into what? Giant of what? Africa. On entrepreneurship. Thank you for watching that video. So guys, before you leave, look at the top here. You will see where the road subscribe. Just subscribe to this great platform and also put on Sean Bear so that whenever we upload any video in this great platform, you will be the first to see it. And don't forget to share this video to all social media platforms on Facebook, WhatsApp, and Instagram, and also on YouTube, so that everyone out there will see this video. So guys, see you guys some other time.